Marcos is defined first about 30 years ago by Professor Marsden and Dr. Fan. It just the jerky, shock-like movement originate from central nervous system. However, later, about 20, 2015 or so, the new definition appears and it included even the peripheral nerve origins. And the very recent definition or proposed by Dr. Mark Hallett and others is just a syndrome. And the term changed syndrome like a jack, jack like movement. So in this case, jack, what is jack? Again, jack is not so precisely defined. So the microns is actually a very rapid, say, jerky movement originate anywhere from paper nerve to central nervous system. And so the, uh, we first see the patient with myoconus, we should uh, determine the characteristics of myoconus and its origin, anatomical origin, and also etiological origin. And for the diagnosis of uh, uh, anatomical is mainly done by electrophysiology and uh, biochemical or say the etiological origin was studied uh, biochemical, neuroimaging, and also the finally maybe even nowadays genetics. So treat the patient, we first see the patient and the origin is determined. And treatment actually depends on the origin and uh, very, very lucky a pattern of a treatment is etiological treatment because we treat the disease itself. So in that case, uh, we did several examinations and finally determined and treat the original uh, disorders. As I said, uh, anatomical or physiological classification of myoclonus is I proposed about 10 different types. And that is the cortical myoclonus, subcortical myoclonus, that is usually seen in Clois fatty Jacob disease or CJD. And ballistic overflow myoclonus is like uh, a bit mild hemiballismus also that originate in the basal ganglia. And uh, breast and reticular myoclonus is uh, uh, first reported by Macaret, Professor Macaret, and exaggerated startle response and the parietal myoclonus. And in the spinal myoclonus, three spinal myoclonus, three types. It's segmental spinal myoclonus, proprio spinal myoclonus, uh, spasmodic reflex myoclonus is the stiff person syndrome. And uh, as I said, uh, a ballistic overflow myoclonus is like hemibarismus, but barismus is very uh, large and uh, rapid movement. So sometimes included in a kind of myoclonus. And finally, paper myoclonus. And paper myoclonus is a typical one is facial spasms. So the treatment, according to treatment, so when we first the patient, we should determine the uh, involuntary movement is really myoclonus or not. That is important. If we determine myoclonus, we first study physio electrophysiologically to, uh, as I said, the classification of myoclonus, which type. And also etiological uh, classification or, or etiology determination is very important for the real treatment or actual treatment of disorders. And if uh, etiological means it's some encephalopathy or encephalitis or brain, a brain tumor or some other disorders, and in that case, we should treat first, treat the etiologically. So that if the brain tumor, neurosurgery is effective, and if the encephalitis may be the 
treatment of antibiotics, some other uh, treatment is good. And that is the very uh, bucky case. And if we cannot have any etiological determination, we should do symptomatic treatment. And this symptomatic treatment is depends on the uh, etiological or no, uh, physiological or anatomical classification. And we already have, uh, so one point I should say, the one etiological treatment, very uh, easy one, is a toxic encephalopathy. If we find out some toxin, uh, very easy to treat, it stop the toxin. So in some cases, anti-epileptic anti drugs is cause myocrome, so stop the treatment is very easy to treat. And also some uh, uh, toxins taken, uh, if so, that to stop it is quite good treatment for the patient. And if such etiological treatment is, not, is impossible, we should do symptomatic treatment. And we have a very excellent four papers of the review papers of etiological or treatment of the, uh, myocrons. And that is uh, published in uh, 2010 by Dr. Uh, Dijek uh, or Tijisen. Uh, she is very famous one, is 20, uh, one in Lancet Neurology published, and another one is Dr. Kelly and Mills, uh, Mills and others is uh, neuro, neuroscience report uh, 20 or 15, and another one is uh, Dr. Kevinans, and and that is the 2014, and uh, one another one is Robach and others is. Uh, 2016. So I, I summarize all summarize all of these uh, papers and a very simple one. And most of the symptomatic treatment uh, you uh, done by clonazepam. So any in any etiological uh, or anatomical or origins, mostly use the clonazepam. And first, the cortical myoclonus is for uh, piracetam, levetilacetam, and clonazepam is very usually used and first choice of that treatment. And cortical subcortical myoclonus, that, that is a bit different from others. That typically is juvenile myoclonus epilepsy or absence seizure. And you may know that is the kind of generalized junk, a generalized EEG appeared, and sometimes benzodiazepine worsen or, or worsen the symptoms. So we should not use this one. And usually we use valuporate and esosaximate. That is the, and other, almost all my cones is chronosepine. So the subcortical macrons CJD or microdystonia is used clonazepam, and uh, obstacles micro syndrome is again symptomatically treated by clonazepam. However, this disorder, obstacles micro syndrome, is most 80% or 90% is due to the malignancy or cancer. So, treat the cancer is the best way for the treatment and some immunological or method to be used for that one. And reticular myoclonus is, is a bit different, is chronazepam, and another one is 5-HTP. That is only the use of this reticular myoclonus. And others is, say, peripheral myoclonus, or spine, a part of spinal myoclonus used by botulinum toxin for the treatment. And typically, the parietal macrons or parietal tremor uh, used by botulinum toxin and peripheral macrons again 
botulinum toxin to for use the treatment because a very localized and just simple injection may be effective for a few for a few months or something. That is the summary of uh, microns.